Sok szeretettel üdvözlök mindenkit a Budapest International Documentary Festival virtuális soraiban. Karsai Roni vagyok, a fesztivál egyik moderátora, és, sok, és nagyon önmel üdvözlök itt mindenkit a Hegy Szelleme című film beszélgetésén, ahol a rendezővel Eliza Kubaszkával beszélgetünk. Hi Eliza, it's uh, very nice to have you here with us. Um, And um, I must say that it's, it was a very interesting film, I think, it's, uh, to me to see, especially because I'm a big fan of uh, mountain climbing as well, even though I haven't made it to the Himalayas yet, but uh, I'm hoping to see them one day. And um, um, I think it's a very interesting film on the conflict related to The exclusive, like also there's this exclusivity of mountain climbing because it's still, I think it's a very close circle of people who make it there in a way, who have this uh, hobby or if they do it professionally, but also to see this portrayal of how the local people are sort of struggling. They want to make money and uh, the foreigners want to come in and uh, conquer the mountains. It's uh, very interesting. Yes, hello. I'm very happy to be with you, at least online. Yeah. <laughs> I hope maybe next time I will be able to be in reality. Uh, so thank you very much for these uh, nice word, uh, words. Yes, um, the idea from the very beginning uh, about this film was to tell a story about the Himalayan expedition, but entirely from the local uh, people point of view from the Sherpa's point of view, because uh, this is something which I think I can say it was never done before. I mean, there were attempts to make a films about Sherpas. Mostly what I found was were uh, TV reportage, reportage, but uh, it was really hard for me when I, did, when I was doing research to find a, a film where I could feel what uh, Sherpa people think about our expeditions. So this is the, the idea and this is the question I wanted to ask in this film, mainly. Uh, do you climb yourself? Because um, I think you have a background uh, in <laughs> mountain climbing. Yeah, I also have background now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is, these are really good rocks behind me, really good for rock climbing. Yes, I, I'm, I'm a rock climber myself and also an alpinist and I used to participate also in expeditions uh, in many different places in the world, including Karakorum, for example. So yeah, uh, I can say that this mountain world is also my world. And um, how was it uh, with the filming? Um, how, how did the, the Sherpa family um, behaved or how did they react when there was so much attention onto them because I think they are not used to it because they are always sort of pushed into the background you know because they are always like little I, it's a very ugly word but they are like helpers in a way you know that they are in the background they are carrying everything and even though they they have like vital knowledge like without them the expeditions wouldn't uh, come to life Yes, of course, this is the reality that most of the time we don't know, uh, their, we even don't know their names. We, we know the names of the climbers, we know uh, who, who achieve some amazing, um, who climb some amazing mountains, but very rarely we hear that there were other people who support the expedition. And very often uh, there are Sherpas. So um, I work on this film for four years. So we, you need a lot of time to build this trust between you, me as a filmmaker and my film protagonist. Uh, but uh, I have to say that from the very beginning, uh, they liked my idea of this film and they were supporting me a lot and they were really very, very helpful Uh, I think they were happy that uh, there was someone who decided to give them a voice. And how long did it take long for them to open up? Because I can, I can imagine that they were really happy that, yes, like you say, that finally they were given a voice. 
but uh, was, did it take a long time for them to really open up? Because of course it was not natural for them to behave like carelessly in front of the cameras. Mm, well, probably no. I mean, uh, everything depends on the people. So it depends on you, how you behave as a film director and as uh, your whole film crew, because of course I, I, I didn't this uh, I didn't film this film by myself. I, yeah. I have a group of people who work with me for these last four years. There was my producer, Monica Breit, uh, who used to work with me for the last 10 years, and this is not our first film together. Also, uh, cameraman Piotr Sołowski, uh, it's also not our first time, and we have also a very good relationship. So, when you have a group, good group of the people, like uh, your film crew, and then what you do is honest, I would say. And what we wanted to do was honest. We really wanted to give a voice to these people. So I think it's naturally that these people, Sherpas, Nada and Jomdo, we, we talk about uh, my protagonists. They, they feel it from the very beginning. And um, as I said, I think they like it. And then I was very slowly, slowly, very delicate, going into the house, watching them, listening to them. Uh, learning uh, what is important in their life, what they believe, and what is the biggest problems for them. And this is how I discovered the story that uh, uh, Nada, who works as a climbing Sherpa, so he, he reached the summit of Everest, for example, for nine times. And if he, if he would live in our country, like in my country, yeah. or a different European country, I believe he would be already a hero probably he would have a sponsors, sponsors, probably yes, definitely. Uh, he would be um, invited for some collections, you know, but in his life, it really doesn't change anything. He still has a problem to educate his youngest son. He really cannot find money for that. And uh, when I learned about it, I thought, wow, that that's really amazing the, how, <clears throat> how their life is going on, how difficult it is, and uh, that I really want to talk about it. I really want to show it. Yeah, I think you showed it really, really well. And I, for me, it was also really interesting to see how the family dynamics work when we are seeing them in their family quarters and also when they are among them, like among themselves. It's also a very nice um, cultural portrayal, sort of, because it's not. It doesn't happen every day that we get a glimpse into their like an average family life and how they how they talk to each other, how the mother talks. It's very interesting altogether, like to see this in front of our yeah, eyes. Yeah, and I think in the same same time we can discover that uh, we are very similar. If I if I when I translated the um, talks, because of course I don't speak Tibetan language. Uh, I was prepared very well for this uh, for this main shooting uh, because I spent a lot of time with them before. But still, when there were uh, when we were filming, I wasn't sure in one hundred percent what they are talking about. Like in you know, so for example, there there is nice scene which I I found very interesting when they are arguing about the future, about uh, their son future. And I was sure that the discussion is completely opposite uh, when I was filming it. That, that the wife, Dom, John Dom, mother, that she's trying to convince father, Nada, to climb this holy mountain and to earn this money because they have no choice. And suddenly when I translate it, I don't want to say too much because uh, maybe not everyone's seen the film already. Yeah. So you will see, but it was opposite when I discovered it in translation it was like, wow, okay, so I was wrong. But it was super also uh, like a big adventure for me when I was discovering this material like, and translating, uh, translating uh, this material. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say because I'm a tra trained translator and interpreter, so that's like... I, that can be like exciting and like weird in the same time that uh, you are filming everything because you want to have material, and then later on it's like a, like a Christmas surprise. Like what's you gonna find when you finally get translated everything that they say? And it's like it's like it must 
have been really exciting for you as well because it's like uh, you, you didn't even know what's going to happen. It's like, it's interesting. Yes, yes, it was it was very interesting, especially that in our film there were many languages. Uh, so the main language is this Tibetan dialect. It's not really Tibetan language. This is very interesting that this is a Gunsa dialect, and we discovered that this language speaks maybe a few hundred people in the world. And it was never even it was never written before, and we had to write it to make a script later for TV, oh, wow. which asked us, because uh, who was co-producing the film, they asked us to have everything script. <laughs> and it was super difficult. Uh, also, there were there is Russian language, which is also not my first language. I'm Polish. There, um, there was English. So it was completely mixed of languages. And uh, we spent a lot of time on, on translation. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, and... Um... Yeah, what I wanted to ask as well is that, um, like, uh, with uh, filming in extreme conditions, that's also another interesting, uh, like, question. Like, how how does it go? Like, how how much more preparation does it take from a filming point of view? And also, like, how risky it is because you know you're holding the camera, for example. But of course, like, when um, uh, Dmitri and Sergei, um, like, they attempt to uh, climb the wall, it's like, that's like really harsh conditions. So I was like, I was rooting for the crew as well when I was watching the film, like, oh my God, I was just imagining how, how you guys must have been like operating. It's really interesting. Uh, no, yes, uh, I think it's a good question. Um, I'm doing this for my last 10 years, if we talk about filming. Before I was, as I said, uh, a climber. So I was participating in expeditions, so somehow I'm used to uh, this environment and to these conditions. But of course, when we do film, uh, there are a lot of equipment, uh, electric equipment, and uh, we are very, from, very far from the civilization. So we know that if anything will be broken, like a camera or lens, which happened actually, or generator, we got a uh, problem with generators for a week, then it really um, all filming uh, can be in danger that that we will not be able to to make this film anymore to finish it. But also what you said, uh, and I think it was the most important, uh, the most difficult to me and also to my producer Monica Braid because um, somehow we create this film from the very beginning together, and both of us we feel very responsible for everything what is happening in the on the film set not only for the equipment of course but uh, probably mostly mostly for the people and as you said um, there were climbers which are one of the best uh, alpinists in the world because dima and sergey they uh, won already in their career climbing career twice the piolet d'or award which is uh, like uh, climbing Oscar, I would yeah. say. So the, yeah, you, I read you can, about that. Yes, they give it once per year to the to team uh, whose achievement was the highest in the year from the whole expedition in the world, and they won it twice. Uh, so of course they were so good, and also the idea to climb uh, a virgin wall of. Uh, Kumbakarna, version of Janu, because it, this is the same mountain, just has two names, yes. was the idea. And they told me many times, Elisa, don't worry, we would do it with you or without you. This, it was our dream, it was our goal. But still, I was also very stressed when they were climbing the mountain and uh, the conditions were very, very bad. We filmed, I would say, in winter condition in Himalayas, uh, it was danger, and I think it was very close to tragedy. So, yeah, th this was the the most difficult part of this of this shooting for me. Yeah, it's um, for me with um, such documentaries or even like fiction films that are about uh, mountain climbing. It's always there is always this constant tension in the person when you watch it that. Okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? It's, it's what's really, really interesting. 
Uh, the other, I think, from the narrative um, aspect, it was really interesting, the, how the whole tale aspect, how you built up the tension, sort of, with the tale. How did that idea come in, you know, fr with the... We are hearing this uh, tale that's coming back, like, uh, it was very interesting. Mm, I spent uh, quite a lot of time in editing room with my great editor, Barbara Tonyshen, uh, who is uh, from Germany, because our film uh, was uh, made in uh, international co-production. Uh, these kind of films are so expensive that it's really difficult to find money for production just in one country. So we built this co-production between three countries, Poland, Switzerland and Germany. And uh, I needed to work in Germany for a while and then I, I had to I had to make post-production in Switzerland, for example, and I got an a composer from Switzerland, which was also a great uh, meeting. But if we come back to your question, um, so I work with Barbara very long in editing film to find the order in this story, how to how to build it. Uh, of course, this is a documentary, so we follow the real situations. We followed the real life. But then in the editing room, you can create uh, this, you can create the story this way that uh, it will be easier for the audience to understand uh, what is it about. And also this is your opportunity to, to tell the story you wanted to tell. And for me, from the very beginning, idea was to tell this story about Himalayan expedition, but from the Sherpa point of view. And also I learned, living with Sherpas, that they see the Himalayas as a kingdom of the gods. And this is what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to show in my film. I wanted us, audience, to feel that these are not the highest mountains in the world, that these are, that now we are approaching of the real kingdom of gods. That's why we also use the legend. This is the legend we heard on the place, and yeah, all the all the construction of the film was made in this way. Yeah, I think with um, like you said, with um, putting in the tale, it really brought everything together and put everything in like context a little bit. So it was um, really, I think, it was a great idea. And um, I know that in 2015 you had an, a movie, for example, K2, Touching the Sky. And uh, with that in mind, I immediately thought of the recent uh, achievement of the Sherpas on K2. So do you think that, uh, how did you feel like, for example, with the recent achievement of, the, um, of Sherpas? Yes, well, well, how can I feel? <laughs> I'm not... I'm not objective because I spent my last four years with Sherpas. So when I learn that uh, 10 um, Nepali climbers, including nine Sherpas, climbed uh, K2 in winter, which was the last 8,000 high peak and never climbed before in winter, uh, I was uh, very happy. I think it is very symbolic and accidentally I think in connected with our, our film somehow, that now much more people are interested uh, about Sherpas, who they are, that there are not only porters, that there are people who have their own opinions about our expeditions, they have their own opinions about the mountains, that they are the host of Himalayas, in fact. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's really great that it happened uh, for them, great for our film, for my protagonist. And as I said, it's very symbolic. It, this symbiosis between climbing world, Himalayan expeditions and Sherpas lasts for almost 100 years now. So 100 years, so we had to wait till the moment we really started to think about these people more serious, that they are not just helpers, that without them, we would not be able to organize yeah, any right. of uh, a series bigger, big uh, uh, Himalayan expedition. Just it would be just impossible. Yeah, I really feel felt this that they sort of they they had 
this this is like a victory that they sort of won back their mountain because it's it often happens that you know like yeah foreigners come in like sometimes backed up by lots of money and with sponsors and it's like there are incredible sums of money that are exchanging uh, hands and it's um, still there are all these like average people who were born there and they are like like spiritually connected to these mountains and they have um, a lot more like um, like a spe more special relationship with these mountains that really have to be respected and yeah and it's nice that they are being heard now <laughs> Yeah, I think, as I said, it was very, it is very symbolic and that's why I think it's important. And also what you said about how they, how they see the nature, how they treat the nature. And this is something I think we could learn that uh, we are not the gods of this planet, <laughs> as we see with the situation which is happening now around the world that we cannot meet. Uh, Sherpa people respect the nature. They really respect it because if they would not respect the nature, the, rest, the nature would crush them. They live uh, in really harsh conditions. Uh, my protagonist, Dava, the boy, was born at the altitude of 4,700 meters. Uh, so, so how come you, you, you need to pay attention to the nature which is around you? You need to listen to it. And I think it's something we could learn. And how is the family doing nowadays? Are you in touch with them? Have you heard of, of them? Yeah, of course we are in constant touch. Uh, same like everywhere because of uh, COVID, uh, everything was closed in Kathmandu. Uh, Dava recently uh, came back to school. And what we did, which I'm very happy, and we are still doing this, we promised uh, John Doe, who is mother of yeah. our boy, uh, that we will find money for Dava's education. Oh, cool. And I was very, yeah, I was very afraid because of this COVID situation. There were no festivals in reality. We couldn't invite them because there was my plan to invite Dava to Europe. We couldn't do anything like that, but we started to do some actions to collect money in Poland and in Switzerland uh, for, for a moment, and it works. It really works. So I think we have almost already uh, about half we, we need for his eight years study. So I'm still collecting this money. Um, and if we will succeed, I think it's, uh, it will be great because then it means that it was not only the film, that it was something uh, bigger, that we, 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 really, we really will change the life of this family. I think that that's amazing. I like it. Oh, this is amazing, really. Oh, that almost brought tears to my eyes, but I'm not going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, this is really nice. It's really nice of you guys. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I think that, um, yeah. Um, thank you very much for taking your time. I think like mm, you put so much things in context even more with this talk. So thank you very much for taking the time. And um, I hope everything will go well for you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I, I wish you a very nice festival. And I hope you will enjoy the film. Yeah, and I hope that uh, we will get the chance to maybe to come the next time to Budapest really for like a proper uh, 3D festival like in person. <laughs> yeah. Could be, could be good. I've never been in Budapest and I would really oh. like to visit. Yeah, yeah. It, would be, it would be lovely to have you here. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Köszönjük, hogy velünk tartottak. Ha már látták a filmet, akkor reméljük, hogy tetszett ez a beszélgetés, de hogyha még nem, akkor viszont nagyon ajánlom, hogy nézzék meg. És ne felejtjék, hogy ez a film és a beszélgetés is március 10-ig a fesztivál végéig megnézhető.